Hey everybody, welcome back uh, from the break for the second session uh, on, of the course Worship Ministry. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen one once again. Yeah, Okay, uh, we uh, finished uh, seeing the seven roles of a worship pastor. Okay, uh, just to quickly go through them. The first role is worship pastor as a priest, and then worship pastor as a prophet, worship pastor as a teacher, worship pastor as a pastor, as an intercessor, as a mentor, and as an administrator. Okay, um, so all of these, uh, again, like I said, like I always say, this is not only this, this, this list is not exhaustive. Uh, it's not like, okay, seven points and no more, uh, but there's always more to it because the role is dynamic. It can keep evolving, it can keep developing, changing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, more responsibilities can be added, but um, these were just some of the points that, in my opinion, thought would make. Um, the role of a worship pastor more effective. All right. Uh, this is what we concluded in the last chapter with. But uh, now in the second session, the same page, page number 43, uh, we look at the role of the worship team members. Okay. Uh, on one hand, you have the worship pastor and his roles. And on the other hand, you have the worship team members. Okay. Um, worship pastor cannot function on his own. Uh, he needs to have a team and he needs to have a healthy uh, and an effective team. So you need two hands to clap. It's like that, right? Um, so the worship team includes worship leaders, leaders, if a church has more than one. Uh, it includes singers, it includes musicians, the band, uh, sound team, um, sound and setup, as we say, uh, the projection, the media team. Uh, and also the camera team, you know, like the, the media team that involves in, in the projection, that is involved in the projection. And in certain churches, the dance and the choreography team, you know, and there could be more uh, depending on the size of the church uh, or the culture of the church. Okay. Um, so these are the potential team members that are part of a worship team of a church, of a ministry. Okay. So what, are, what is their role and what is expected of them? Okay, so the qualifications of a worship team member have a firm commitment to the team. Okay, have a firm commitment to the team to be regular and present whenever required. Okay, it could be rehearsal or pre-service, a prayer, etc. Okay, at this point is pretty crucial. Have a firm commitment to the team. Actually, uh, when we get to the point of auditions, right, which we will in the next section, uh, is uh, you know, if a person wants to audition for the worship team at ABC, uh, the minimum requirement is that person is expected to be attending ABC for at least six months. At least six months, okay? Uh, that kind of show. So, you know, because if every Sunday or every month, if that individual is in different, different churches, um, the genuine reasons may be genuine, whatever, but it's very hard to... Uh, to depend on that individual, isn't it? Because we don't know if that person can be committed on a regular basis. So if the, if the person is regular to the church, you know that the person will also be, uh, you know, be regular to the team meetings, uh, you know, will be committed uh, to the team as well, okay? So having a firm uh, commitment to the team is very, very essential. Um, uh, and uh, you know, another qualification is to have attitude of enthusiasm and cooperation, uh, who's willing to cooperate, uh, who's enthusiastic about being part of the worship ministry, uh, who wants to serve, uh, you know, uh, that's the attitude you need to be going for, uh, must be open to receive correction and instruction, okay? Uh, this point cannot be stressed on enough. If the person does not have an attitude uh, of, you know, receiving, if the person is not teachable, that is, who is not, you know, if the person is not open to corrections or instructions, uh, you know, then it's it's very hard, uh, and it can be very uh, dangerous to the entire team. Okay, 
the person should be uh, open to receive correction and instruction and submit it to the authority of the worship pastor and pastor. Um, and, you know, this, this last point is actually a bonus. Okay, must be flexible musically means if that person can play more than one instrument, great. Uh, you know, that's just an additional thing, but it's not like, a, you know, uh, oh, you, you can sing. If you can't play the keyboard, uh, you know, we don't like you. <laughs> it's not that. Okay. Um, if the person is flexible, that's amazing. Nothing like it. Okay. So that's, this is the role of the worship team members. Okay. And then what does that team do? One of the key things what a worship team does is a rehearsal. Okay. Um, we'll get into the details of what it is. Now, ideally, it is good for the worship team to have a rehearsal other than practice before service, prefer, preferably midweek. Okay. Uh, what should happen at a rehearsal? What goes on in a rehearsal? Uh, at a rehearsal, you know, praise and worship. The team spends time in God's presence, worshiping in unity, uh, teaching and Bible study. Okay, there is a small time of sharing and encouragement. Okay, there's a discussion, uh, you know, about uh, about the songs, about the Sunday service, or whatever it is. Okay, the team prays. Um, there's also musical rehearsal. The team also practices the songs for Sunday service or any you know, any event that's related to the, to the church. Okay, now please notice that this is all rehearsal. Okay, uh, at APC, what we do is, uh, you know, once we know this is the team that is rostered for this Sunday, say September 19th, the coming Sunday, uh, me, Pastor Jakes, uh, and, uh, you know, a few, few others, we... <laughs> We see uh, when everybody is free and when we can meet for rehearsal, okay? Um, and so we hire a jam room for two hours or three hours, whatever the need is. Based on the need, we hire a jam room. We meet, uh, we, we meet over there. And then, so yeah, we go through the songs. We have a time of prayer. We have a time of fellowship. As in, we discuss how and ask how everybody is doing. Uh, you know, we, we spend time in prayer, etc., etc. So all of that happens in the rehearsal when everybody comes together, like six or seven individuals, sometimes more or less. Okay, that's what happens in a rehearsal. Okay, and we encourage that the team meets for rehearsal uh, at least once a week before they actually go on stage. Now, what is the difference between practice? Uh, practice is personal and rehearsal is relational. Okay, you can say it with your mics muted, okay, wherever you are. Say practice is personal and rehearsal is relational. Okay, so the team has to have at least one full rehearsal together before coming to lead the service. The roster team is expected to learn and practice their individual parts thoroughly before arriving on time at the venue for rehearsal. Okay, look at that point, okay? The roster team is expected to learn and practice their individual parts. Okay, so for example, uh, this is what uh, means practice, the difference between practice and rehearsal. Uh, I practice alone at home. It's it's personal. Okay, the worship leader sends me the song list. Uh, you know, he sends the, every, everybody the song list. So, if my if the rehearsal time for the full band is on Saturday at ten o'clock in the morning, okay, I am not going to go to that rehearsal without listening to the songs, without practicing the songs, not like that. What I will do through the throughout the week is I will listen to the songs, I will make notes, uh, I will learn the keyboard parts or the guitar parts or the bass bass guitar parts or the drums part, whichever instrument I have to play. Um, I will learn my individual parts of that song. That is practice. So now when you meet Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning, you are ready for rehearsal. Okay, then that becomes a relation. It's like, okay, hey, I'm doing this. This is the drum part. What is the guitar part? Okay, and then, you know, you all play together and that becomes a rehearsal. Okay, um, so you practice uh, alone at home 
and then you come prepared for your rehearsal. And we, we encourage individuals to do that, okay? Um, during the rehearsal, it's mentioned in the notes, the team works on the start or the finish of the songs or the transition between the songs. Uh, you know, all of these small details will be worked out during the rehearsal time, okay? Uh, so, uh, you know, so we talk about, okay, I'm going to read this scripture before we start the first song. Um, after I finish reading the scripture, okay, so the Stephen, the drummer, you can give the count, start the metronome and start the intro, intro of the song. So small details like that will be worked during the rehearsal time. Okay, but the basic structure of the song, the chords for the song, etc., will be learned personally, you know, in your private time. Okay, are you guys with me? Are you able to follow the difference between uh, rehearsal and practice? Yeah. It's, it's okay if, if uh, not all of you are musicians. It's absolutely fine. But, you know, you are going to be a leader or, you know, who will be hiring a uh, worship pastor or whatnot. You need to know all of these things. You can question your worship pastor. You know, it's like, okay, what is, how does your team practice? Uh, how does your team, uh, when, do you, when does the worship team meet for rehearsal? And all of that, you know, you can set the certain expectations, uh, you know, as a pastor. So all of this, you don't need to be a musician to understand, but it's just equipping you as a leader. All right, guys. Okay. Um, then the next thing we look at the role of the band. Um, this is which is musicians, okay? The role of the band uh, in the worship team, okay? Uh, let's let's just quickly. I mean, we we've read these scriptures, but uh, let's just quickly go to uh, you know uh, the, the scriptures mentioned there. Uh, we will go to First Chronicles chapter fifteen, and we've read these scriptures before, right? Okay, First Chronicles 15, uh, chapter 15, verse 16, it says, David told the leaders of the Levites to appoint their brothers as singers to sing joyful songs accompanied by musical instruments, lyres, harps, and cymbals. Okay, that's just one verse. And we go to the next chapter and we see verse 42. Uh, in First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 42, uh, we see that He-Man and Jerithan were responsible for the sounding of the trumpets and cymbals and for the playing of the other instrumented for sacred songs. The sons of Jerithan were stationed at the gate. Okay, um, these see these chapters, right, from chapter 15, 16, 17, 18, uh, till 25, uh, very, very crucial, um, you know, uh, in just seeing how David went about organizing uh, worship ministry. We, read, we saw only from chapter 25, but then all the way from chapter 15 to 25, it's very crucial if you want to go ahead and learn, okay? Um, so God is raising up musicians who will not simply play for or play along with worship, but who will themselves worship on their instruments, okay? Uh, Pay attention to this, guys. Okay. God is raising up musicians who will not simply play for the Sunday service songs and go or play along with. You know, I will give two hours of my time every Sunday to this church. I will play for them, for their worship, and then, you know, no. But God is raising up musicians who will themselves worship on their instruments, okay? Who will be, who will, who will be worshipers, not just musicians, uh, right, they're worshiping musicians. Musicians are no longer to be mere accompanists, but initiators, worshipers on their instrument. Okay, who can prophetically lead, inspire worship in the congregation? Okay, um, worship must have a heart after God. Uh, worship must have a heart after God and must demonstrate a consistent. Christian life. Sorry, a musician. Okay, so this is the role of a musician is not just to be a, a musician, you know, play the keyboards and go off, but no, 
they are also called to be a worshiper because they are set apart. They are set apart for the ministry of God. And uh, they all need to be trained, skilled, mu musically trained and skilled in what they are doing. Okay. Um, so that is the role of the band, of the musicians in the team. Okay. Um, an effective worship leader skillfully combines biblical truth with music. I'll say that again. Okay. An effective worship leader skillfully combines biblical truth okay, with music. Okay, when, when Moses had to find men to oversee the construction of the tabernacle, he didn't pass around the sign-up list, okay, saying, okay, whoever is interested, just come and sign up, right? He chooses craftsmen whom God has gifted with skills and intelligence. You read that in Exodus chapter 36, verse 1. And when David looked for a, a Levite to lead singing, he picked Kenaniel because he was skillful at it. Under divine inspiration, David wrote the mu that musicians are to play skillfully on the strings. And David himself, as king over the people, guided them with his skillful hands. Okay, uh, this is actually one of my favorite Psalms. If you can go to Psalm 78, verse 72, you'll see uh, very quickly uh, what it means. Okay, sorry. Psalm 78, it's the last verse of that psalm. Psalm 78, verse 72. It says, And David shepherded them with integrity of heart. With skillful hands, he led them. Okay, David shepherded them with integrity of heart. Uh, in other translation, it, might, it can say, David shepherded them with wisdom. Uh, and, and with skillful hands, he led them. Okay, so in everything that David did, he was skilled at it. Okay, um, and in New Testament, we see that Paul referred to himself as a skilled master builder. Okay, um, so the role of a musician, we saw what their role is, okay, that they are set apart, that they are not just musicians, but they are called to prophesy with their instruments. They were set apart, they were trained and skilled in their instruments. Okay, and having said that, now we move is looking at uh, the you know the importance of being skillfully trained okay and we saw a few of the leaders who are who were skillful in what they did and this section talks about three things to remember about skill okay skill is a gift from god for his glory okay your gift your talent um, is a gift from god for his glory Skill must be developed, okay? And skill doesn't make worship more acceptable before God, okay? Skill alone doesn't make worship more acceptable before God. Okay, we look at that now. Uh, skill is a gift from God for his glory, okay? We've all been blessed with a talent, with a gift, okay? Uh, some can sing, some can paint, some can dance, uh, some, uh, some, uh, you know, some can cook well uh, and whatnot. So everybody is gifted differently, right? Uh, but the second point there says skill must be developed. Okay. Uh, most of us, uh, I, I'm not sure if you know of this uh, cricket commentator. If you watch cricket, you'll know Harsha Bogle. Um, you know, one of the very famous Indian cricket commentators. Uh, he talks about uh, the difference between uh, Sachin Tendulkar and Vinod Kamli, who was another you know uh, cricketer who grew up, uh, who was a classmate, schoolmate of Sachin. And he says that how both of them were talented, both had skill. Okay, but whereas Sachin, he he worked on his skill and he got better, whereas Vinod Kamli. He only believed that you know his talent was enough and did not really work hard at his skill. And then his career ended very soon. And then, uh, I mean, if you know anything about Sachin, you know what he went on to do. So he's celebrated big time, right? Um, so just knowing that, okay, uh, you know, I can do this, uh, you know, I can do this, I'm good at it is not enough. 
you need to work at it. There is always room to get better. Okay, there is always scope for you to improve. Okay, you will. Uh, the second or the minute you st stop learning, that's the minute. That's the time you stop growing. Okay, so you constantly and consistently seek to learn. You know, keep getting improved every day, every day, every day, every day. Okay, uh, improve. So skill must be developed. Um, but having emphasized so much on skill, skill alone doesn't make worship more acceptable before God. Okay, it if your heart is in the right place, uh, because God always sees the heart, isn't it? If the if your heart of worship is in the right place, what skill does is it and it it enhances your worship. Okay, it becomes it it just becomes more beautiful more presentable okay um, so with all the benefits of the mass outpouring of worship songs in the past decade uh, there have been some downsides one is the belief that a sincere heart a guitar and a knowledge of three chords qualify someone to lead worship in the church uh, fortunately more and more churches are realizing that it takes skill to put music and biblical truth together in such a way that people actually worship God rather than the leader, the music themselves and other idols. Okay, so uh, it is possible that your skill can become an idol. Okay, uh, the skill that skill may come from natural gifting, training or experience, but it is an important part of what a worship leader does. Okay, you combine biblical truth with music. Okay, if that is not happening, if you're not combining biblical truth, um, then it's just a noisy gong, right? Uh, as, as, as God says, like you worship me uh, with your lips, but your heart is far away from me. Okay, there are so many skilled musicians out there who are not necessarily, uh, their heart might not be in the right place. Um, okay, so uh, just watch out for that. So that is uh, the role of the three things to remember about skill. Okay. Um, from there on, we uh, we look at the skills that a worship leader is expected to possess. Okay, the skills of the worship leader. Uh, the worship leader is both an art and a science. Okay, we can learn to do it better and better. Worship leading is an art in that it takes musical intuition and honed natural gift to lead well. Okay, so some of the some of the skills that are ex, uh, expected of a worship leader is effective musical skill. Goes without saying, organization or administration preparation, uh, experience, uh, practice, leadership ability, relational ability, calling, character, intuition, natural gifting, and God's grace, of course. Okay. Um, the skills of a worship leader. Uh, you, you know, you'll know that a worship leader is skillful if is uh, you know if he's uh, if he has an effective musical skill, like his knowledge over the instrument, his knowledge over uh, the the music. Okay, an organization and preparation. Okay, uh, is the worship leader always saying, okay, uh, you know, I'm going to be prophetic, prophetic all the time, spontaneous, you know, I'm not going to put a song list together, uh, or is he going to prepare? Is he going to put a song list together, prepare well, practice, prepare for the practice, prepare for the rehearsals? Uh, is he organized? Uh, you know, that's another important skill. And uh, of course, experience, uh, you know, for how many years you've been doing this, uh, that matters as well. Does he practice? I'm saying, does he or she practice? Okay, leadership ability. Uh, worship leader needs to have leadership ability. Okay, and that topic, uh, we can just talk on leadership for an entire semester, right? And that's what you'll do, isn't it? So we can talk on leadership for an entire semester or more. Um, there's masters in leadership and all that you can do. So, um, Leadership is essential, uh, to say the least, uh, as an important skill for a worship leader, right? And then his relational ability. 
relational ability uh, what 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 does this point mean like are you you know are you a relatable person like uh, you know can can an individual approach and speak with you are you approachable uh, like do you understand okay um, after the church service is done are you there around to meet with the church people okay to meet with the congregation or i i or do you just uh, you know disappear as soon as the church service is done okay this is very important because uh, the congregation is if, if they are only seeing you on the stage all the time and they are not seeing you off stage and if they are not able to connect with you off stage uh, it becomes very hard for them to relate and for you to relate with each other okay so relational ability is one of the one of those points is that you are there to build a relationship with the congregation and the congregation with you okay uh, the calling of a worship leader and the character of the worship leader uh, is essential uh, it's there's this old saying uh, i don't know how old this is uh, says your anointing will take you up but it is your character that will, it will keep you up there okay so should i say that again <laughs> okay your anointing will take you up but it is your character that it will keep you up there okay in so many ways saul was a uh, you know king saul was also anointed uh, the first king of israel but his character became questionable towards the end which was the result of his downfall isn't it um so that, that that's crucial guys uh, uh, intuition, uh, being sensitive to God's leading, uh, you know, is he dependent on God's grace? So these are all just, again, just, uh, uh, you know, a few uh, uh, the skills of the worship leader that's expected of him, okay, him or her. All right. Uh, again, let me just pause here and ask uh, any questions. Uh, do you have any questions, anything that you want to share? Kiran, Dave, any questions? Is it making sense? Neelam? Okay. Thomas, all, all okay? Clear, Pastor. Okay, all right. Okay, um, so next section, we're going into uh, the what are the character traits of the effective worship leader? Okay, just remember this uh, chapter is talking about the organizational aspects of worship ministry. Okay, this chapter is just emphasizing on the practical steps, practical methods, and the org organizational aspect of a worship ministry. That's why, you know, there's so much of... Um, a theory kind of explanations to this chapter okay um so what are the character traits of the of an effective worship leader uh, in a worship leader a pastor should be primarily looking for a disciple of jesus who is strong in character okay in a worship leader a pastor should be primarily looking for a disciple of jesus who is strong in character and not simply full of gifting or full of themselves in other words who a person is in the secret place of their hearts must be infinitely more important to us than how they play their instrument sing or function in front of a crowd okay who a person is in the secret place of their hearts must be infinitely more important to us than how they play their instruments, sing or function in front of a crowd, okay? So having said that, it is also true that we must value the powerful, uh, the power of beautiful and well-played worship music, okay? Uh, so again, it's talking about a combination of intimacy with the Lord, uh, and his skill on on you know on playing an instrument okay um, 
I've always looked at it like this. Okay, guys, just pay attention here. Remember, we say ministry is about serving, right? Uh, the word ministry literally comes from the root word, which means cup bearer. Okay, cup bearer, like Nehemiah was, like, you know, you, you're a server, you serve, okay? Um, so just, just stay with me here. Okay, let's say, you know, you, you go to the most beautiful fine dining restaurant, okay, five-star hotel. Okay, and, and you see some of these shows on, uh, you know, uh, uh, on travel and living, you know, and all these top hotels, they, they show that, okay, they, they iron the, the table, you know, the cloth they put on the table. You know, so it's just beautiful. It's clean. It's without wrinkles. And, uh, you know, the way they keep the plates and the way and the distance between the, the, what is that? Uh, glass, water glass. Okay, they measure that, and if there's another glass, they measure bit the distance between that, the, between the water glass and say uh, the wine glass or whatever, um, and you know the distance between uh, the fork and the knife and the spoon. Everything is on point, right? Everything is set perfectly on the table. Okay. Um, now what is happening here? So let's just take an example. So let's say me and my wife, uh, we go to that restaurant for a dinner, okay? So this five-star hotel, and everything is set beautifully, perfectly. Everything is measured like really well, okay? Um, and then we have the person who serves the food for us, okay? And uh, me and my wife, we are having this, uh, you know, very intimate conversation. You know, it's like a candlelight dinner or whatever it is. Okay, we're, we're looking at e into each other's eyes. Yeah, I'm telling her how much I love her and she tells me how much she loves me, etc., etc. Okay, so we're having this intimate moment uh, over dinner. And then let's just say, like, a bang, a, a, a plate falls, you know, someone drops the plate or, you know, someone drops the glass or a spoon or what. So what happens? What is that immediate reaction at that, you know, at moments like that is that we, we get, you know, distracted, isn't it? From the conversation that you're having with your friend and you immediately turn and look back is like, what just happened? What just happened? Yes or no? Or is it just me who does that? <laughs> right? So what I'm trying to say is if you're not skilled enough or on your instrument, right? Um, like, if you play a wrong chord, you know, if you don't end the song correctly, if you don't start the song correctly, and if you don't sing the song in the correct key as expected, all of that becomes like that person who dropped a plate, that distracted. It, all of those as like a distraction in a you know, for a person in the congregation who's having that intimate uh, moment with Jesus during worship. Right. So that, you know, in the congregation, this is a person who is engaged with Jesus, who is worshiping, you know, fixed and bang, something goes wrong. Something falls. You know, there's a wrong chord being played. And it's like, OK, you know, that their moment with Jesus is just being disturbed. Right. So it's very important uh, that that there is this beautiful balance of anointing and skilled musicianship simply because you can serve better okay you can serve skillfully that's the whole point of it all right um so here a worship leader is a spiritual leader who pastors the congregation who shepherds the congregation who leads the congregation every time they step up to lead worship for that reason, all the qualities that we look for in any spiritual leader in the church, uh, be they a pastor or an elder, small group leader, youth pastor, or worship leader, are similar. Okay, so what questions should you, as a senior pastor, should be asking before you uh, take into consideration or hire this person as a worship leader or as a worship pastor? Here are some of the questions that you should ask. Okay, first thing, are they humble? Okay, and do you think this is important, guys? Humble, humility? 
very important why is it important why is it very important what is it about humility that is important especially uh, especially in music field people knowingly or unknowingly uh, they proud about their uh, talents and gifting so when we worship uh, god they should have the uh, you know reverence towards god they should always recognize it's not about talent it's all about him and we are came to worship him so uh, any servant of god even not only the worship ministry even the pastors can also uh, any leader can also the pride will uh, can uh, affect the whole ministry uh, right. and the atmosphere everything yeah thanks thomas thank you anybody else dev sadar yes sir in the uh, if you look at how uh, the angel uh, lucifer mm -hmm. he, he he was fallen because of the pride mm -hmm. so as a as a worship minister a pride can come very easily mm -hmm. so uh, keeping out yourself humble is one of the key points to to go as far as god wants us to go yeah awesome yeah thanks Dave. yeah uh anybody else siddharth why, why do you think it's important what does humility do yeah i think for me humility is a place of like in a place next to grow so like we can grow more the more we have, the more we grow something like that because mm -hmm. i remember when i was trying like there are times and i have not humble and i was just i couldn't grow more you know i was just right. going in the past so i think it's a place to grow when we humble ourselves yeah thank you uh thank you sir uh, yeah i think uh, you know we we all know actually everybody knows the importance of humility it's just that what we do with that knowledge you know do we act <laughs> uh it, you know that's the second question isn't it but uh, are they humble is that's such an important question to ask uh, for a worship leader because the first worship leader like dave was talking about the first the first worship leader had serious issues with submission and humility uh it was just full of pride and we see that in isaiah chapter 14 right isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 onwards it talks about lucifer right uh, it says how you have fallen from heaven o morning star son of the dawn you have been cast down to the earth this i'm reading from isaiah chapter 14 okay isaiah 14 verse 13 onwards you said in your heart i will ascend to heaven i will raise my throne above the stars of god i will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain i will ascend above the tops of the clouds i will make myself like the most high that's verse 14 i will make myself like the most high but you were brought down to the grave to the depths of the pit okay you see that line there the verse 14 i will make myself like the most high it simply means i will make myself like god i will as in verse 13 it says you said in your heart i will ascend to heaven i will raise my throne above the stars of god okay that's those are all the statements of pride and do you remember the one of the lines that he uses uh to uh, you know against eve to tempt her you know he says you know god told you not to eat of this fruit because if you eat you will become like him you get what i'm saying you eat of this you know he knows that if you eat of this fruit eve you will become like the most high that same poison that kind of infected lucifer that same thing he used it against humanity so here's the thing the source of pride is satan the source right you know the origin of pride the the root of all sin is connected it goes to the one thing called pride 
but the root and the source of everything beautiful and heavenly is humility because jesus is the humility of god manifested right everything about jesus is is just hum, uh, is just humility screaming humility so the source of humility is jesus so basically when you're asking that question are they humble you're actually asking are they like jesus okay i would uh, actually, i'm not sure how many of you all are into reading books but uh, i would suggest this book uh, by i'm just typing in the chat section it's, it's a book by andrew murray it's called humility beauty of holiness Okay, I've just typed the name of the book. Uh, I mean, if you're interested, you can buy it. Uh, you you can listen to listen to it for free on YouTube. Andrew Murray, Humility, which is the beauty of holiness. It's guys, uh, it's one of the must-read books uh, for Christians. I would say it's a it's a very small book as well. It's really, trust me, it's going to. I, I guarantee that it's going to impact. uh your walk uh with god um is something is beautiful about uh you know asserting humility okay um so that's the first question and the most important question you will ever ask uh, are they humble or are they like jesus and then every other question follows do they have a vibrant secret life with god and that will most of the times be seen as a fruit uh, in uh, you know as an overflow of their public ministry are they able to take direction or correction that means are they teachable are the accolades or stage or affirmations of people too important to them is stage and the spotlight more important than god uh, are they doing what they do to serve or to gain respect their intentions okay you're trying to gauge their intention are they good husbands or wives of a brother are they good sisters you know at home because as we discussed um how is their relationship with the family members right it's one of the relationships that makes or breaks isn't it are they willing to train others to take over for them are they willing to train others to take over for them or did you know that you know you wanting to teach another person is also a sign of humility you know when when a person comes to to you and asks okay is like hey, hey can you teach me how to do this you can respond in two ways right uh, i can say yeah sure of course i will teach you uh, what i know and that is a beautiful sign of humility or you can respond saying no 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 if i teach you what i know then you you know uh then uh you will become better than me or uh, you know i i don't want to share my secret with you <laughs> you see what i'm saying right uh you don't want to have people like that on your team uh you know again just going back to first chronicles 25 in david's worship team there were teachers as well as students right there there is such a beautiful blend of pe- uh, people in his team okay the next question are they skilled at what they do are they skilled at what they do are they teachable and eager to learn are they willing to quietly care for the poor as much as they are willing to stand on stage okay that means uh you know one of the greatest commandments uh, when jesus was asked is love the lord your god with all your heart soul mind and strength and then love your neighbor as yourself right loving your neighbor simply means uh not right the, not your house neighbor or anything yes of course them too but you know the the downtrodden the less fortunate in your society in your community uh do you care for them uh does that excite you as much as it excites playing music on a sunday morning if that doesn't excite you if blessing the poor if reaching out to the and ministering to the poor doesn't excite you uh and if only the lights and the stage attracts you um that's another question about character like, hmm, is that the right person uh you know 
are they loving gentle uh, are they kind and generous uh, do they have a substantial you know uh, interior life with god that reflects itself in their outward lifestyle do they have all of this okay um and i believe uh, i i will stop here at page 46 at this section okay of what are the character traits of the effective worship leader um and i think uh that i hope that you know that all of these uh, you know will help you in your in your journey as a leader and in ministry uh, you know in uh, in choosing the right person uh, you know into in, into your ministry and what not okay uh, any questions guys any thoughts that you want to share Okay, I'll actually stop sharing my screen. Kannan, uh, are you okay? Everything cool? Any questions, Prince? Do you need, um, no, uh, as you said, uh, you have to check, are they humble? So, how can we check when we, means, uh, you cannot mm-hmm. ask that question directly are you humble <laughs> that yeah yeah so i think it's you know uh in a way it will, it will be you know shown in their life as well like as a fruit you know uh, thomas for example uh see us worship right is a sign of humility that means uh like hebrew originally was a pictorial language right it it's like they were they, it was written on walls they would carve on walls that is how they communicated initially so the symbol or sign for worship was face down complete face down you know with everything it was and that was a sign of complete surrender it was a sign of complete humility okay uh, so what i'm trying to say is if a person is willing to bow before god in worship and not willing to bow before you know as in bow as in be humble uh and loving towards men so then there is this contradiction right um and um so that's one way to observe and then the other way is you know you go to god and you know and pray uh you know and ask for discernment and what not uh sometimes uh, you know uh, the worship team uh, is not having a humility uh i if i observe certain things where they're proud and looking for a spotlight and yeah. this kind of things how can we uh gently guide them or tell them or because uh, if we say that they will take uh you know uh, in a way uh, i'm something pointing out there like that and all they won't easily take especially the person who have the pride cannot take easily the corrections corrections so yeah. how can we handle these things uh, yes um so i mean it, it it just really comes down to the senior pastor and the worship pastor is you know one of the roles that we saw uh, as a worship pastor was a role of a teacher okay uh, i mean it says you know people people perish without lack of knowledge right so when we teach when you you know it's like hey this is what is expected of a worship team this is what makes a worshiper okay uh, you know when you teach about humility when you teach about uh, different aspects of worship uh and you prayerfully believe that okay this is going to impact the members the individuals of the team and if it still doesn't like i said if there are members and i'm sure there will be because uh you know people are people uh, imagine if the whole world was uh, humble <laughs> okay unfortunately in an, it's not but then you as a leader have to step in and you know confront and correct you have to do that and pastor ashish does it uh, i have to do it pastor jakes does it you know if there's something that is if something is not right and you see it's not healthy and that will infect uh, it will send negative vibes through the entire team you have to cut it at stop it at the root it's like hey i'm observing this is what has been happening uh um, this is not acceptable this is not part of our culture this is not this is we do not believe in this kind of an attitude or character so uh you know you, you either change or, or you have to step down it's as simple as that when you have to confront you have to confront thomas 
Thank you, Pastor. You're welcome. Okay, yeah, I mean, on the side note, another skill to how uh, to grow as a leader is uh, one of the things that you can look up, uh, you know, is uh, biblical confrontation. Like, how do you confront, uh, you know, such uh, such incidents? And I, and let's see, I mean, thanks for bringing this up. Maybe, uh, you know, there is a certain video that I, I'll, you know, kind of show next week, uh, you know, how you can go about correcting and confronting uh, the worship team members when necessary, when needed. Okay. All right. So uh, I'll stop the recording now. Uh